Australia's Federation Guard, General Salute, Reef and Arms. <laughs> Shoulder! Out! Guard order! Out! Shoulder! Arms! Guard order! Arms! So my pluggy to one. Australia's Federation Guard and the band of the Royal Military College of Australia are ready for your inspection. If you'd like to join me on my left.
Federation Guard, National Salute, present! Arms!
you. Thank you very much. Everybody's set up? Good. Well, I am delighted to welcome Prime Minister Najib to Australia. Uh, he has been here on a number of occasions, but this is his first visit as Prime Minister and he is a very welcome friend. Uh, the Prime Minister with me is a friend of Australia, a leader in our region. We've discussed today the depth of the relationship and partnership between our two countries, and it's a partnership with a very impressive history. We have fought shoulder to shoulder together uh, during the Second World War and in the emergency fighting against communism. We have studied together and we have talked today about how 300,000 Malaysians have been educated in this country. That's a long-standing part of our relationship. And we have prospered together. We are countries with a dynamic economic partnership and we will be seeking to build on that for the future. Today we've discussed the economic ties between our two countries and we've determined that we want to accelerate the free trade agreement agreement that our two countries have been discussing. Uh, the Prime Minister made a request of me to accelerate those discussions and I've agreed that that is a good idea. So we have determined today that we will conclude this free trade agreement between our two nations within the coming year and we want to see it concluded and signed before the anniversary of this visit next year. We've also uh, talked today about cooperation in areas as diverse as education and as important to the Australian community as sport. And we've had the opportunity to talk about our sports mad country. We've t signed today two memorandums of understanding, one a memorandum of understanding on further cooperation in education, one a memorandum of understanding on further cooperation in sport. Uh, we've also talked about our approaches uh, to regional issues and the work we do together in regional forums, particularly the East Asia Summit, which was the first occasion that I had the opportunity to meet with the Prime Minister. We've reaffirmed our shared commitment to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I have also congratulated the Prime Minister on his impressive leadership on combating people smuggling and countering terrorism and transnational crime in our region. It's clear that these regional challenges require regional solutions and we are continuing to work together on them. The strength of our cooperation extends to work we do in Afghanistan. I'm particularly proud of the joint program we have to train in Malaysia master teachers who then go to train teachers in Afghanistan. That is very impressive work. Today, Prime Minister Najib and I took stock of our nation's shared history and we committed to define our relationship as a relationship for the 21st century. Our shared achievements in the past will be built on by shared achievements in the future. Because we live in the region where the future is going to happen, the Asia-Pacific region. Prime Minister, I'm very honoured by your visit and I welcome you to make some remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister Gillard. And uh, first of all, um, I would like to say how delighted I am to be here once again in Australia in a slightly different capacity. But I do know Australia pretty well over the years. Uh, been here many times, but uh, as you put it, this is my first visit as Prime Minister, and this is uh, to reciprocate your visit to Malaysia. And uh, we had a very, uh, very productive, very useful discussion. I can only um, second whatever Prime Minister has said and certainly those are the areas of agreement that we have arrived at today. I started by expressing our, our sincere, heartfelt condolences about, with respect to the uh, very, very uh, uh, damaging floods in Queensland, but we are so impressed with the indomitable spirit of the Australian people that you have recovered well, you have a great sense of volunteerism, and you've been very, very positive, uh, including helping Malaysian students. So I'd like to say how grateful we are to you, Prime Minister, and to your government. And we certainly look forward to a much uh, deeper relationship, a relationship that has been predicated 
on a very strong foundation uh, over many, many years, uh, starting, of course, with your soldiers uh, fighting for our freedom, and we are very grateful for your um, stalwart uh, and sterling support for us in the defense of Malaya and then subsequently Malaysia. And uh, that defense relationship is still very strong today. The FPDA arrangements, uh, it's, it's important because that lets, leads to peace and stability in our region. We recognize there is a great deal of uh, importance with respect to uh, human trafficking and people smuggling, boat people, which is a big issue in Australia. Uh, it is an issue that we can identify with because um, many years ago we had similar problems with respect to the Vietnamese boat people and we had to handle it. Uh, and therefore, uh, I, I pledge our support and to be as cooperative as possible. Uh, we will take this up in Bali in due course uh, in the near future and uh, we will try to find uh, cooperative solutions and, and be as useful as possible and we'll do our part to make sure that Malaysia is never a transit point for these people and uh, this is where cooperation in terms of uh, exchange of timely intelligence will be very useful for us to make the appropriate uh, interdiction. In the area of uh, fighting global terrorism, we continue to cooperate and as you know, we have been fortunate that uh, we are free from uh, Al-Qaeda activities in Malaysia and also uh, the threat of Jamaah Islamia is very much under control in Malaysia. And our efforts in southern Philippines, for example, I brief Prime Minister that is to make sure that uh, southern Philippines will be a, a region of peace and stability and will not fester the growth of uh, unwanted uh, terrorist uh, activities in that part of the world. Uh, with respect to economic cooperation, uh, our total trade is in the region of 10 billion, uh, which is uh, uh, a good level, but uh, we believe that we can push it to even greater heights. And therefore, I was very, very keen that the uh, negotiations with respect to the uh, Malaysia-Australia Free Trade Agreement, uh, MAFTA will be uh, concluded uh, as soon as possible, and we both agree that uh, it would be useful to set a certain timeline for our negotiations to conclude, and we both agree that uh, the, within a year uh, we should sign the uh, Malaysia-Australia Free Trade Agreement and that comes uh, on the back of the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, negotiations of which uh, will continue and hopefully by the time uh, APEC uh, takes place in November, there'll be some interim agreement and, and eventually we will become partners within the uh, Asia-Pacific region. Um, uh, I would also like to, to mention that the uh, education links have always been strong and uh, when I was education minister, I, I gave approval to the setting up of three universities from Australia, uh, uh, namely Monash, Curtin, and Swinburne. Uh, all these three universities have campuses in Malaysia. Uh, they are very happy, very pleased uh, with their presence in Malaysia, and they're doing very well. Uh, and uh, we hope that uh, in the light that there are so many uh, Malaysian uh, students uh, studying here over the years, uh, between more than 200,000 have studied here, and uh, a very, very strong alumni, even in our Malaysian cabinet. So we would like to see more Malaysian, uh, Australian students studying uh, in Malaysia, and there's some understanding that we should encourage, for example, uh, one semester uh, during the course for Australian students to study in Malaysia, because the numbers are quite small. We are gratified that the number of Australian visiting Malaysia in terms of tourists, the numbers are burgeoning. Uh, we had 8.9% uh, uh, increase uh, from two, 2009 to 2010, about uh, 580,000 uh, Australians uh, now visit Malaysia per year. We are increasing the uh, linkages between our two countries, and this uh, latest will be 
direct flight from Perth to Kota Kinabalu. Uh, and we expect that the numbers should be more, uh, will be on an upswing in the future. We also talked about uh, Australia's uh, competency in the field of uh, carbon reduction. And um, Malaysia hopes to learn from Australia how we can uh, reduce our carbon footprint in Malaysia. Also in the area of uh, public sector reform, we uh, noted uh, your accomplishment in this particular field and we'll be uh, very keen to learn more about what Australia has done uh, to improve the efficiency of uh, the uh, public sector. So, all in all, uh, I'm very pleased with the uh, uh, discussions we had. Uh, I think uh, it's very clear that Australia is a close friend of Malaysia, a long-time partner and we hope to take uh, the relationship to be even stronger as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll take some questions now in turn from the media. You may want to start with the media representatives from Malaysia. Uh, Prime Minister Gillard, um, is Australia seeking to increase investments in Malaysia? And if so, in what areas will that be? Uh, we've had some direct discussions today about Australian investment in Malaysia. Uh, Australian businesses uh, want to increase our trade and they want to increase our uh, exchange and investment two way. We want to see Australian investment in Malaysia and we welcome investment by Malaysia in this country. Uh, so we've uh, talked through that today, talked through some very specific uh, companies that have interests uh, in new investments in Malaysia, uh, including uh, Rio Tinto that's investing in, uh, seeking to invest in uh, aluminium uh, and we have one of our banks also seeking to invest. Uh, so that has been raised today as an example of our growing economic partnership. Yes. Andrew Craven from the West Australian. Welcome to Canberra, Prime Minister. Uh, my question uh, is about board protection. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to know what your impressions or thoughts or views are on Prime Minister Gillard's uh, idea for a regional processing centre in East Timor. And secondly, Australian authorities believe Malaysia is a transit point for many asylum seekers that reach Australia, What, uh, especially Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Uh, if you could detail what, what further cooperation you, you've, you are offering. Well, first of all, uh, we've amended the uh, Human Trafficking uh, Act in Malaysia, people smuggling and the, we have increased the penalties. Penalties now are, are very severe. Uh, secondly, we have uh, also stepped up our interdiction and uh, there have been uh, many instances of uh, people have been uh, interdicted in Malaysia before they move on to Australia. I think that uh, kind of uh, cooperation will continue. With respect to the uh, processing centre, this is a regional initiative and I believe this will be discussed in Bali. We need a bit of time to study the Australian uh, proposal, but we will be as positive as we can. Are you positive at the moment? What is your disposition towards it at the moment? We have to take uh, a, a regional outlook first, uh, and uh, we will be as cooperative as possible. A question for Prime Minister Gilad. Uh, the Prime Minister mentioned that uh, there is a big disparity between the number of students here, Malaysian students here in Australia, and the number of Australian students in Malaysia. Are there any plans for you to increase the number of students going to further their studies in Malaysia? Uh, we had the opportunity during our discussions in the Cabinet Room uh, to uh, discuss this matter with our Minister, relevant Minister Chris Evans, who's the Minister for Tertiary Education. Uh, we noted that there are some study patterns now where students in Australia who are doing qualifications at Australian universities can spend a semester in Malaysia and we both uh, agreed that that's a very good development and we would like to see more of that. Uh, so the Minister for Tertiary Education, Chris Evans, uh, arising from our discussions, will now be uh, raising that issue with Australian universities to see what we can do uh, to have more Australian students uh, visit Malaysia and study uh, part of their courses uh, in, in Malaysia. That would be a good way of facilitating exchange. Prime Minister Gillard, if I could ask a domestic question. Um, on the Greens proposal on territories uh, powers, is it your understanding that that will in any way allow the territories to move their own laws on gay marriage or will the 
federal marriage acts still have primacy and effectively prevent that, and also in your factional delegation yesterday you received, uh, what pressure are you under now to exert yourself uh, as the leader of the government to assure people that Bob Brown's not running the country? Well, uh, thank, thank you for that uh, question with so few assumptions made in its formulation. If you just excuse me for one moment dealing with a domestic matter. Uh, if I can deal with this in some detail and describe exactly uh, the government's position, uh, the uh, caucus meeting on Tuesday considered an amending proposition about the ability of territories to make their own legislation. Uh, the Labor Party supported similar legislation in 2006. Uh, so there was a discussion at caucus and we have supported similar legislation in the past. Uh, subsequent to the caucus meeting, uh, a number of caucus members raised a concern with me about the breadth of that legislation. Uh, there were some amendments uh, to the bill uh, that came in quite late, as I understand it, during the course of Monday. Some caucus members raised concern with me about the breadth of the legislation. Can I say there is nothing unusual about that process? I see caucus members frequently. They are members of my team uh, and I see them very frequently to discuss over issues and an issue was raised with me yesterday. Uh, the uh, government determined to support the reference of that bill to a committee. The committee will now look into it and we may well learn some things from the committee's deliberations. I'd also note that members of the opposition uh, have been favourably disposed to this kind of legislation in the past. Unsurprisingly, they are people who represent territories, and I would uh, point in that regard to Senator Nigel Scullion, for example, who is on the record uh, in defence of the territory he represents in the Senate, uh, supporting propositions like this one. Uh, I do uh, want to just deal with some media reports today. Uh, I understand that there have been media reports that during uh, the discussion about this legislation yesterday uh, that someone raised with me uh, concerns about the influence of the Greens on the government. That report is completely untrue. No caucus member has ever raised such concerns with me. Uh, so we will have the uh, Senate inquiry and we will uh, see what emerges from the Senate inquiry. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, could I please introduce Mrs. Jeanette Phillips, the Ngunnawal Elder, who will deliver a welcome to country. Good afternoon, everyone. I am honoured to say hello to her beautiful Prime Minister, Ms Julie Gillard and her partner, and the most honourable Prime Minister and his dear wife of Malaysia. I welcome you to our lands, and I hope that you feel the spirit of this amazing country of ours. While you are here, keep safe, and those that you have left behind remain safe. Ladies and gentlemen, could I have your attention, please? Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Honourable Julia Gillard, Prime Minister of Australia.
Thank you very much. Your Excellency Prime Minister Najib, thank you for joining us here today. You do us a very great honour. And to your wonderful wife, thank you for your hospitality and friendship when I visited your country. Can I acknowledge the Leader of the Opposition, honourable ministers, members of parliament from Malaysia and from Australia, senior officials, diplomats and friends. Prime Minister, can I say to you, welcome to Australia and welcome to our parliament. Your visit here is a milestone in the long friendship between our two countries, and it is full of significance for us. Yours is the third visit by a Malaysian Prime Minister in 30 years, and it follows in the steps of one of Malaysia's greatest sons, the man who more than any other set your nation on the path of modernisation, your late father who through great suffering served the Malaysian people until his final days and whose role and legacy you inherit. It was Prime Minister Gough Whitlam who was proud to welcome your father to Canberra in 1975. And as Gough's friend and successor, I very proudly welcome you and I thank you for making this journey to be with us. This is a journey of understanding, dialogue and cooperation. Your Excellency's visit comes soon after my own visit to Malaysia last year, and I want to thank you for your concern that you were not able to meet me at that time and for taking the time to talk to me on the telephone, though you were unwell during those days. In choosing Malaysia as the first regional country to make a bilateral visit as Prime Minister, I wanted to signal to you and to your nation just how much we value the relationship with Malaysia. I wanted to reaffirm also Australia's deep and principled commitment to regional engagement and to all we can achieve together as partners and friends. Our ties are long-standing and they're strong. We value our defence history when we stood together against the successive threats of fascism and communism. We value our education links going back to the Colombo plan and we are very pleased that we've seen 300,000 Malaysians educated here, forming a strong alumni and an important contribution to your nation's development. It's a truly staggering figure, 300,000. We're working together in new and important areas such as public sector reform, superannuation and regulatory reform and we will be very pleased to keep deepening this partnership. And of course, we share a deepening economic relationship too, with two-way trade now valued at 14 billion Australian dollars. And as we have discussed this morning, there is considerable scope for that to go further. But most importantly, your visit is about the future because the region we share is the one where the destiny of the 21st century will be written. Prime Minister, you're a leader in our region and you are a friend. You are an exemplar in the fight against extremism and upholding the true values of Islam. And I salute your leadership of the global movement of moderates. And like us, you share an abiding commitment to the benefits of free trade, which is why we will work so closely with you on the Trans-Pacific Partnership and why I have been pleased to agree today to your suggestion that we set an end date for the signature of the free trade agreement between our two countries. Prime Minister, your visit further strengthens our already strong education relationship. We have both served as reformist education ministers for our nations, and I know we both share a passionate commitment to the role a great education system can play in opening up opportunity for every child and in forming the human capital that will be the source of our future growth and wealth. Given our shared commitment, I know you join me in taking great pride in the fact that 23,000 Malaysians are current, currently enrolled in Australian education institutions. These are young men and young women who will play such an important part in realising your dream for the future of your country. And as we discussed today, we look forward to increasing the number of Australian students who travel to Malaysia and study there. We are very proud that Australia is an education destination of choice for your country. We look forward to making Malaysia a destination of choice for Australian students. 
Today, we furthered our economic and education cooperation, given the importance of human capital to our economies, through a new memorandum of understanding. And we will be sharing our technical expertise in the development of vocational education in Malaysia. And I know that that work builds on what you started as Education Minister. It's therefore very appropriate that Australia's largest university is tomorrow awarding you an honorary doctorate. Monash University was named after John Monash. He was one of Australia's finest military leaders, but he was also a man who valued education very, very deeply. He himself had three university degrees showing his passion for education, and he saw education as a key to our nation's future and to the quality of leadership. The Australian community finds abiding inspiration in his example, and I'm sure you will too. Of course, Prime Minister, the benefits of education extend far beyond our own shores. Our education cooperation is also benefiting third countries, like Afghanistan, where the Malaysian-Australian education project is skilling Afghan master teachers so that they can go and train others. We think very proudly of the children who will benefit. In some cases, their families have not known peace since these children's grandparents were children themselves. And now, after decades of conflict and poverty, these children will have the chance of a new life. Mr Prime Minister, our nation's defence ties are a very long standing, and I know you've had the opportunity to discuss that with Minister Stephen Smith today. Our ties stretch back to before Malaysia's independence in 1957. Our personnel have experienced the hardships of Somalia, East Timor and Afghanistan. And we've done so, not for any material gain, but to assist the cause of security and the cause of freedom. This year, we celebrate the 40th year of the five power defence arrangements, a set of agreements that underline our shared strategic interests and affirm that Asia will never, we hope, see war again. The Australian Defence Force continues to utilise and have personnel based at the Royal Malaysian Air Force at Butterworth, and we've mentioned that in our discussions today. The Malaysian-Australia Joint Peacekeeping Initiative is building regional peacekeeping capacity in support of mutual regional security objectives. And we've jointly trained PNG and East Timor forces, with a third workshop being considered this year. Likewise, in law enforcement, I acknowledge your leadership in combating transnational crime, including people smuggling and human trafficking in our region. I warmly welcome Malaysia's action to criminalise people smuggling, and I recognise your strong leadership in disrupting criminal syndicates in the region, including the outstanding contribution of Malaysia's law enforcement community we are very, very grateful for it. Of course, we know that more needs to be done to address the issue of irregular people movements, and we look forward to doing that work together. Your Excellency, these developments all lead us back to the same point, that our region can best succeed through dialogue and cooperation. Malaysia has always been at the forefront of dialogue. As a founding member of ASEAN and APEC, a founding member of the World Trade Organisation, a founding member of the Cairns Group, and as the host for the inaugural East Asia Summit in 2005. Malaysia has a proud, role, proud record of its role in regional leadership, and I look forward to continuing to work closely with you to ensure the success of the East Asia Summit with the US and China shortly to join. It's an Australian priority to work with you on developing a substantial political and security agenda for the East Asia Summit in order to strengthen its future role in the region. And we're also seeking in partnership with you to set an ambitious agenda for APEC at this year's summit. These are only some of the things we plan to do in the future. Prime Minister, your visit marks a new chapter of comprehensive partnership 
a partnership based on warm and cordial relations between ourselves, between our ministers, between our civil servants, law enforcement and our military authorities. And it's not just that governments are making a significant contribution to this relationship, though we are, it is our people who are making this relationship our greatest strength. Through the Australia-Malaysia Institute, AsiaLink, Malaysia's Institute of Strategic and International Studies and other institutions, our scholars and our diplomats, our artists and writers, our civil society organisations engage in open and thoughtful dialogue. Our schools are twinning together. Our young people can now travel and explore each other's cultures on working holiday visas. And direct flights between our two countries, including the many direct flights to Perth that we've discussed today uh, as we've sat round the Cabinet table, urged on by Stephen Smith and Chris Evans, uh, bringing our people closer and closer together. Prime Minister, just 10 days ago, a courageous and brilliant athlete mastered a very serious injury to win bronze at the World Cycling Championships in Manchester. The name of this man, of course, is Azi al-Hazni Awang. This man carried your nation's flag in Beijing, and yet he trains with an Australian coach in my home city of Melbourne. It's a metaphor for everything we seek and everything we hope for. It characterises the relationships our predecessors have built, the relationship we will build even further. Because having come so far and achieved so much, there is no limit on what we can do together in the future. A future we will share and a future we will shape. A future that has become closer because of your visit to us this week. Thank you very much for doing us the honour of being here. Thank you. Prime Minister, I would now invite the Leader of the Opposition to make some remarks. Uh, Prime Minister Gillard, uh, distinguished guests and most of all Prime Minister Najib, I'm pleased and honoured to support the remarks of our Prime Minister in welcoming you your wife and your delegation to Australia and to celebrate the links between our two countries. The military links forged in 1941 and 1942 uh, and continued through the emergency and the confrontation and currently institutionalised in the five power defence arrangements. I particularly congratulate you, sir, uh, for the uh, medical teams uh, that you have uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, one of only a handful of Muslim countries uh, uh, to uh, participate in Afghanistan in that way. The trade links uh, that have made uh, Malaysia close to our 10th largest uh, trading partner and that we hope to institutionalise through a free trade agreement. Uh, finally, uh, sir, the people-to-people -people links are immeasurably, uh, immeasurably strengthened by the 300,000 Malaysians who have studied here in Australia from the time of the Colombo Plan in the early 1950s. Uh, here in Australia, sir, Prime Ministers and opposition leaders can have a complex relationship, but as a sign of the importance uh, that my party places on the relationship between Australia and Malaysia, uh, today I released our Prime Minister from her normal duty of voting in the parliament so she could be with you. Uh, you can say what you like about the state of the party political contest in Australia, but when it comes to the relationship with Malaysia, uh, we stand united in our determination never ever to be recalcitrant. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Dato Sri Mohammed Najib Abdul Razak, Prime Minister of Malaysia.
Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon, uh, Prime Minister Julia Gillard, uh, Honorable Speaker of the House, Mr. Jenkins, um, Honorable Senator John Hogg, Honorable Tony Abbott, Leader of the Opposition, Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I have been hosting many uh, visits of foreign leaders. And one of the hallmarks of being a successful host, if you can get everything right, including the weather. <laughs> it seems to me that, Prime Minister, you have got everything right today. And I certainly feel, above all, not only the arrangements are wonderful, but above all, a sense of warmth, of friendship, of wanting to work together, of a sense that although we are quite far apart in distance, we have an inextricable links between our two countries. So I would like to thank you, Prime Minister, for inviting me on the back of your visit to Malaysia, for which I regret very much not being able to appear in person. But I was down with chicken pox, of all things. <laughs> and you wouldn't want to meet me when I was down with chicken pox. <laughs> and my advice is do not get chicken pox if you're above 50. <laughs> but uh, my, kind, my wife was kind enough to deputize for me during lunch. And I hope uh, you found the visit useful as much as we did. Looking forward, I cannot but fully underline and support Prime Minister for what, all the things you've said, because I truly believe that there is enormous potential in our bilateral relationship, which is strong. It has been predicated on uh, defense, and I'd like to state once again how much we appreciate Australian soldiers fighting gallantly for our freedom during the Second World War against the communists and stood by us. And until today, you're right, Prime Minister, that the five power defense arrangements is key to ensuring peace and stability for our part of the world. The defense relationship during difficult times, political times, have always been strong and continue to be strong. And I'm being a former defense minister, I will support that relationship to be even stronger. As we move forward, the other important link, of course, is education. You rightly said that this is key. I think, especially for countries like Malaysia, we've reached a certain stage of development, but we have rather ambitious plans for the future. We think we can become a developed nation, high-income nation, by the year 2020, in 10 years' time. We are very focused towards it. I can rattle off you the numbers, 6% growth per annum, next 10 years, 444 billion US dollars investment, 3.3 million jobs, 131 entry point projects. These are the things we need to do to transform Malaysia. In fact, we have used the word not change, but transform. Transformation is now the buzzword. And we believe we can do it with the support of our friends. Like Australia, we need a benign external environment. We need foreign investment. We need talent. We need people-to-people -people relationship. We need education. We need all these things so that Malaysia can transform itself at the same time it is also mutually beneficial.
300,000 Malaysians have studied in Australia over the years. You have a huge constituency in Malaysia. 300,000 people have great affinity for Australia. A number of cabinet ministers went to school, went to university here, including our Minister of International Trade and Industry, whose experience included a first-class honours at Melbourne University, plus one night at a cemetery in Melbourne. <laughs> That's an, a, a nature of the relationship. And it continues to be strong. I have to say that I was instrumental in granting the three licenses for the Australian universities to have campuses in Malaysia. Monash, Curtin, and Swinburne, when I was education minister. So, moving forward, trade and investment, it's important for us. That's why I'm delighted, and I look forward to signing this in a year's time. Hopefully, we can have a free trade agreement with Australia, and we can unleash the full potential uh, both ways. A lot of you know, Malaysians do invest in Australia as well. A lot of people have homes in Australia and uh, invest in real estate, in properties. And likewise, we want to encourage more Australians to invest in Malaysia. Prime Minister, I also believe that uh, the uh, other links are important. We um, encourage Australian tourists to visit Malaysia. And there's been a sharp increase, about 8.9% increase in terms of tourists visiting Malaysia. Uh, we can promise you hot, balmy weather, a little bit of rain now and then, but above all, a kind of uh, a bit of everything in Malaysia. And I hope with the uh, more links, now on the Perth to Kota Kinabalu, in which our foreign minister is very pleased to have that link, obviously, we'll certainly be able to bring more and more uh, Australians to visit Malaysia and vice versa. Uh, sports is very important. We, we, we know how strong Australians are in the field of sports. Uh, Australians are crazy about sports, about the lifestyle, which is a very important support uh, to ensure success in sports. And we have signed an MOU with uh, Australia, but I can give you undertaking that we will never beat Australia in, except for badminton, perhaps. <laughs> I would also be quite remiss if I, I didn't take this opportunity to express our profound appreciation to the government of Australia in assisting our students during the floods in Queensland. We deeply appreciate that. And I would also like to express our deeper sympathies and condolences to the government and people of Australia who have undergone immense hardship during the massive floods and violent cyclones. But what impressed us most was the indomitable spirit of the Australian people and the calm resolve to come together and support each other in bracing the storm. 70,000 volunteers from all over Australia joined the armed forces and rescue teams to help the victims. So I congratulate the government as well as Australian people for their sterling spirit to overcome that hardship. Prime Minister, I, when I took over office, I uh, came up with this, not a slogan, but more of a philosophy of One Malaysia. And it strikes to me that if you extrapolate this, we're really living in one world, one planet. And there's so many things that we need to do together. You mentioned about people smuggling, terrorism, irregular people visiting and so forth. And those things can only be solved on a regional and global level. So I'd like to, to tell you that I appreciate the importance 
of that issue to the Australian people, and we will do our level best to support you in whatever way. We certainly do not want Malaysia to be a transit point for those people indulging in people smuggling. And as you know, we have increased the punishment. Uh, penalties are more severe. We have improved our interdiction and our uh, agencies, our enforcement agencies are working very closely together to arrest this as a source of problem uh, for Australia and, and including for Malaysia. We continue to work together. Um, you mentioned uh, Afghanistan, yes, Afghanistan. We have our medical team there and we are grateful for your support. Uh, the, the, our contribution towards global peace and security is underscored by our presence in Afghanistan, our role in southern uh, Philippines, our uh, support for the uh, peaceful usage of the Straits of Malacca, and other regional initiatives, and in particular, the ASEAN uh, uh, summit uh, is uh, a very important process uh, for us to continue to support and the inclusion of Australia, New Zealand, and now, of course, the United States uh, shows that the region can work together through several mechanisms for us to achieve our vision of shared uh, peace and prosperity. I would also like to, to thank uh, uh, Mr. Abbott, the uh, Honorable uh, Head of the Opposition, uh, for your uh, remarks, for your support for what Prime Minister Gillard says, and certainly uh, uh, we will delete the word recalcitrant from our dictionary. Uh, this, we are, none of us are recalcitrant. Every one of us is very positive. Every one of us is very optimistic that this relationship can only be stronger and stronger as we move forward. I give you my commitment, and I'd like this relationship to be a very strong one and a relationship that can really shape our region. And together, we will work towards a better future. Thank you once again, Prime Minister.